Icon of the Seas is advertised as the world's biggest vacation, but is it everything that they say it is in the marketing? Let's find out. Welcome back to Cruise News and Boom Story. Sit down, have a drink, and talk about all things cruise related. Today we are talking about Icon of the Seas. And we're talking about some things that we think could be improved upon. You're putting it lightly. That could be improved upon for their next Icon, or yeah, Icon class ship. Um, so we had a really good time on the cruise and, you know, we thought it was a fantastic ship. But there is just some things that miss the mark a little bit for us that we would love to see them work on and fix. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Let's dive into it. Topic number one, Unero Numero. We were very excited about the swim and tonic. We were. And it was there. It was working. It was. And the bar Drinks itself. flowing. Very good. Yep. Um, but the problem was, is it was so good and so popular. It was always crowded. The main problem is that it was very small. When you get there, you see it in real life. It is pretty small. And even some of the workers were saying that they wish it was double the size because it's such a popular attraction. So I would love to see Royal Caribbean do something and make Swim and Tonic even bigger so that more people can enjoy it and it doesn't seem so crowded because it's definitely a need. I mean, it was a trial. It was the it first was, time they yeah. did it. I don't think they knew how well it would be re received. Mm -hmm. um, believe it or not, cruisers like to swim and drink. They do. Yeah, and we like to <laughs> not have to get out of the pool to get a drink. So I think that's why a lot of the popularity existed there. So that yeah. that's the topic number one. We think Swim and Tonic was just way too small and we think that should have been made double maybe triple the size. Oh yeah, easily. Um, so I'd be curious to see what they do with Icon 3 and 4 yep. and so on and so forth, what that looks like. I would love to see them do a really gigantic uh, summit bar. It'd be fantastic. This next one is a real problem that we struggled with. <laughs> and, you know, we still don't know how to really overcome it. There were too many bars <laughs> and too many food options. Yes. This is just an Oasis Icon class ship problem. It's not really a it's problem. It's not really a problem. But it's, what it creates is it creates like the FOMO. Yeah. You have fear that you're going to miss out on something. And so like we spent weeks and weeks and weeks prepping for this and making lists and checking in twice and making sure we had everything mapped out. And we still got off the ship and we're like, we forgot to go here. We forgot to try that. Yeah. It's so many things to try. And even when you do get to try something, you really enjoy it. Sometimes you don't get to go back and get to get more because there's so many other things you also want to try. And like Caleb said, this isn't really a bad thing. It's a good problem to have. It's good to have too many options instead of too few options. So if you are going on Icon, just make sure you really prepare yourself and you get a good feeling of what is on the ship because it will help you from having FOMO and missing out on the, the good parts. Yeah, and this isn't something that I would really want Royal to change. No. I think it's a great thing to yeah. have all of these bars and food options because it gives you a lot of variety. But we're the type of people when we cruise, we want to do everything. We want to see everything. We want to yeah. experience it all. So it's really hard in seven days. It's hard. To get around this entire ship, drinking and eating at every single place. We have decided it is time after, I don't know how many times, what, five times? Five. After five times, Icon of the Seas has helped us determine we are no longer dining at Chops ever again. <laughs> we are chopping Chops Grill. It, yeah, the it's thing time. is, it's the same menu every single time. And after having it a few times, you know, you kind of just determine that it's a really good steakhouse. If you've never had it, I think it's definitely worth trying. But for us, we've had it quite a few times. And the Chops on Icon, it just wasn't the same quality yep. as other ships and the main problem is just the area they put it in felt very enclosed and confined not the normal chops experience where you feel like you have plenty of room it was just kind of odd it was very loud in there waiters were you know kind of cramming in to try to you know get your order and bring you things bumping into each other so it was a chaotic experience especially on icon and i think from now on we're just going to pass on that one yep and the service we had 
my, maybe it was just our particular server. I think And you wouldn't have the same experience, but because of what Molly just said and that just not that great of a experience we have with our server, we've decided five times is enough. We're done. We're going to, we have tried other Royal Caribbean specialty restaurants, but we're going to continue to adventure out and other ones and just remove chops out of our portfolio. Now we have mentioned in other videos we've done that this is probably one of the most accessible large ships we've ever been on. The ability to get from one place to the next, the ability to get um, to Central Park from the Promenade and Surfside from the Promenade and yada yada, like all the way around the ship. But there's one bar, one lounge on this ship that is so far out of the way, it's hidden and it and and you wouldn't find it unless you're actively looking for it. It's very that's, underutilized. Yeah. And because of that reason, yeah. it's underutilized. And that's the music hall. Yeah. I don't know why they shoved this where they shoved it. It uh, was one of the largest music halls we've been to. Yeah. Um, it had two bars. It had two stories. The layout was great. It just was hard to find if you weren't specifically looking for it. If you accidentally walked through the casino, you would find it. And if you wandered down a stairwell for nothing else, you would, ac you would accidentally find it. Other than that, you're not going to know that it exists. It's just not accessible for many of the main places and every other bar, every other venue is. Yeah. I don't know what Music Hall did to Royal Caribbean, but you guys should probably <laughs> talk it out and figure out your differences and, you know, see how you can move forward with maybe a, a better location next time. Yeah. Uh, when we travel on these Oasis class, uh, Icon class ships, one of our favorite rooms is the interior balcony. Uh, we've done Boardwalk before, we've done Central Park, and then now Surfside on Icon. But what we're finding with the Icon class ships is they're foregoing a lot of these interior balconies that we loved. Maybe it's just not as popular. Yeah. That's fine. For the infinite balcony. Well, this is probably, really, it goes for the interior, like, balconies and the exterior, too. There's not as many. There's a lot more of Correct. the infinite so these infinite balconies seem to be very controversial, which is why we personally chose not to go with one yep. since we could avoid it. Um, because the problem with them is once you do open the window, the air conditioning turns off in the whole room. Um, and especially if you're doing a Caribbean cruise, right? That can be problematic, especially if it's very hot. Um, so it seems like people have really mixed reviews on these. Most seem to be not good. Uh, maybe one day we'll try it and we'll be able to speak on it a little better. Um, so for us, being able to actually have a balcony is nice because you can sit out there and enjoy the weather and then you can go back inside yeah. in the nice, cool air conditioning. So that's the perfect balance for us. And I think they just need more of them. They need more in Central Park. They need more throughout the ship because people really do love them. Yeah, that's what we found. There's only one floor worth of balconies in Central Park. I think mm -hmm. Surfside's got some more, but I think yeah. it's like a family and, you know, we didn't want to take a family balcony. Yeah. But even the ocean facing, there's just not as many balconies. And maybe this is the next iteration. I get it. You got to try new things and create new experiences. Uh, but we struggled. We did secure a Central Park balcony, but it took us a long time to find one because there just weren't that many on this particular ship. I've got some problems with El Loco Fresh. I know Molly doesn't, but I do, and I'm going to share them with you. They have no more breakfast. You were sad about that. You were looking forward to an El Loco Fresh breakfast. On my list that we talked about, we made of every place we needed to go, El Loco Fresh breakfast was on that list. I did not get to mark it off that list. It's very sad. I, and there are plenty of other places. This is just me being a little dramatic. <laughs> but I really enjoyed their breakfast because, yeah. I mean, like, who doesn't love a nice breakfast burrito with some salsa? Like, yeah. that's some good stuff. That's tasty. Okay. Delicious. And they still had lunch, and it was perfectly fine, and it was delicious. I just don't know why they forego I don't breakfast. know. It's a weird thing. It would have been good to have an extra breakfast place. That's, you know, they're, like, quick grub. So, I don't know. Maybe they had it for a bit. It wasn't popular. Who knows? But uh, it was a little disappointing. Years of planning went into making Icon. Yes. Years and years and years. Hundreds of millions of man hours, probably. Sure. Someone couldn't figure out three other bar concepts. So they decided to put four <laughs> lime and coconuts on this ship. Four lime and coconuts. Could you imagine a ship if they put like four bionic bars or like four cafe promenades <laughs> or something like that? Like th this is the only one they can get away with it. I think that it was because they have so many different levels of like the on the pool deck. They did a couple levels of the lime and coconut. They did do the frozen lime and coconut, which was one of your favorite. And I think yep. that was a great addition. Um, but it would have also been fun if they had like thrown some other like 
outdoor ideas out there like if they done like maybe i know on utopia they're doing like the pesky parrot there you go like if right. they had thrown one of those on it would have been fun just to kind of mix things up a little bit um and get to try something else because while you're out there it's kind of the only thing out there and even though they are really good it's one of our favorite bars um you like trying new stuff too well and i don't know if you guys know this we like to drink it's just something that we do and for us bars on a cruise ship kind of become like the beacon they're our point of interest it's how we navigate around the ship it's like yeah. oh there's the 1400 oh, oh there's point feather and like we use that as a uh placement so we know where we're at on the ship yeah when you have four lime and coconuts yeah i get really confused of where i'm at on the ship now <laughs> and i don't know what deck i'm on anymore and it it gets troublesome so again four lime and coconuts all right next topic advertised in your cruise planner on the website this beautiful pearl and sitting nestled just behind this lovely mother of pearl <laughs> is the brand new pearl cafe this is an incredible incredible upgrade from cafe promenade not only the space is larger the layout is designed so much better so traffic flows in and out much easier there's big beautiful glass windows to be able to see the ocean these are all the great things but you say caleb this is a critiquing video what's wrong they advertise it as open as 24 hours a day but it really isn't open 24 hours a day and my beef lies with the specialty coffee side it doesn't open until 6 a.m <laughs> i had my heart set i'm an early riser i get up 5 a.m i want some coffee now the 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 bar drip coffee thing you pull the handle and it shoots out that's open but the specialty coffee is not and it's, I got some problems it's there. It's telling you to stay in bed. That's probably what it, it, it's probably Royal Caribbean actually <laughs> questioning, Please why are you up at this time of the exactly. day? Exactly. But I will point out on all of the Royal Caribbean cruises I've been on, I have been able to get my specialty coffee at that time of the day. Have you? I have. Hmm. Not on Icon though. Set your alarms for six. <laughs> That's the trick here. Don't get up any, any minute before six. Now, one of the main problems with Icon, and it seems like the Icon class in general, is that these cruises are not cheap. Yeah. And this is our second most expensive cruise we've ever done. And even though, as we kind of talked about before, we did feel like we got our money's worth out of it, it's still a hard pill to swallow. Oh, yeah to pay this much up front. For some people, it may just simply be out of reach, especially if you have a family and you're trying to take, you know, a lot of people on one of these cruises, it can be very hard to do. So it's something that you have to kind of think about if you are planning a trip on Icon, just know it's gonna be more expensive. I'd love for to see them be able to get the prices down, but it's so popular and booking out so much that I don't see that happening in the near future. Yeah, and our most expensive cruise was like double the price of this. Yeah. And it was small ship on Regent. That included airfare, hotel stay, like, yeah, you know, everything. everything. It's an all-inclusive type of experience. So that, but this is our most expensive, like, not that level of cruise. Yes. And it was, it was expensive, but we still think it was worth it. Yeah. But we would love it to be, I don't know, 10% of the price. That seems like a sweet <laughs> spot. That's where I'd like to cruise that at about 10%. I think everyone would agree tag. with you. <laughs> now, the last thing we want to hit you guys with today is that, uh, yes, these are extremely exaggerated concerns that we're bringing up today. Uh, we actually had an incredible experience, and this is an incredible, incredible ship. But it's only fair if we share the things that we didn't like, because we do spend a lot of times talking about everything that was really good. But we also want you to be aware of here are some of the things that we experienced that weren't up to our liking. Not that they're bad things. No. But those are still some things that we noted that we think if you're if these are concerns for you, just know going into it that you may experience some of that and be able to set your expectations in a good spot. I think that's an important part of any cruise is going in with the right expectations and being able to walk away with a really great vacation. Yeah, if you go into it thinking you're gonna have swim and tonic all to yourself, that's just simply not gonna happen. Is so. that what you thought? <laughs> no, but uh, I didn't think it would be quite as popular as it was. But if you just set your expectations accordingly, then you know, okay, let me make sure I look out for maybe the little slower times or, or things like that. But we do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed, and if you want to hear even more from us, you can check out our podcast, which is the Cruise News and Booze Happy Hour podcast. 
has a full unfiltered hour of us talking about all things cruise related. You can check that out wherever you listen to your podcast. And we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.